We'll start with Presto Stats. So Presto Stats, as you know, the statistics landscape has changed uh, quite a bit over the last few years, and we are continuing to maintain and support our Presto Stats product. Um, and just to reiterate what Keith had mentioned yesterday, we are working with uh, NCAA Live Stats and their XML integration <clears throat> and their XML files uh, for integration with our Live Stats platform and our enhanced stats. Um, Today we have Neil Brown, a care, a care team champion, and Katie Butts, a care team champion with us. Um, he's gonna walk you through a few demos of our sports, and then we'll take some general stats questions. Um, before we get into the video demos, I do want to address the question I'm sure is on everyone's mind. Um, if you purchased fall sports and don't end up having fall sports, uh, we will automatically be crediting those forward to you if you have already received an invoice on those and then just canceled after the fact um, please reach out to our care team and again we'll get that credited forward for you um, so i'm going to play these quick demo videos and then we'll be available for some q a we will start with uh, baseball in this demonstration, I'm going to walk you through using the uh, baseball version of Presto Stats. And uh, after you've scheduled your event within Presto, you can click on your date and time for that event. And it will take you to this screen where you can press the Launch Presto Stats button here in the corner. And it's going to prompt you for the live scoring or score sheet entry. Live scoring is going to be used for any um, in-game live scoring uh, situations. The, scorebook, uh, the score sheet entry is designed for entering stats after a game, uh, if you're scoring from a book or stats that were kept at a field um, and you're entering them afterwards. So for this uh, scenario, we'll go through live scoring. Two, two bits of information you need to fill in first. Uh, so we'll hit edit here. And you can go in and go ahead and enter your team records. These will come in automatically um, if the teams have a record within Presto. Put in your location here. And uh, there's other information here you can fill out as you'd like. Uh, your weather, some event notes, uh, your umpires if you want, name of the stadium, just different information. The conference neutral exhibition region, all of this stuff will come through from the event setup page. But if you forgot to mark something, uh, you can always do that here. And then down here, you can adjust uh, some other important game information. So if you're just playing a seven inning game, you can change that there. Uh, if it's game one of a double header, just so that's marked in the stat file and everything, just different items you can adjust down here. Go ahead and save that. And now we can go in and select our starters. If uh, you are a Presto client, your roster will, once it's entered into game day, will automatically be carried over into the stat software for every game. And likewise for your opponent. Uh, if they're a Presto client or you know a member of the NJCA or the NAIA who has asked their schools to enter the rosters uh, for stat purposes, the, any roster that's entered into Presto will automatically come into the stat software. If your opponent uh, doesn't have a roster in here for some reason, you can just use this import stat crew button uh, stat crew roster button and it will up you can upload a roster file that that team has provided once you have those lineups you can go ahead and hit your starting lineup down here and just go through and set that for every player As you can see, uh, all you have to do is put in the position number, and the system will recognize uh, that player's position. You can also type out their position if you'd like. And then obviously this spot here, if your pitcher isn't batting, um, in fact, let's just do that for uh, the sake of things. Make that our pitcher. And we're all set for that, for the away team. And now we'll do the home team. Not well. 
now our lineups are set. So once we've saved both of those, it'll kick you back to the add play screen and you'll see this. Uh, so you can now begin entering plays. Uh, at this point, the stat software works exactly like Stat Crew, if you're familiar with those entries, including the pitch tracker. So just put your P in here, press enter, and your pitch tracking screen will come up. So you can go ahead and uh, if you if you choose to uh, begin tracking pitches. And we'll go ahead and put a ball in play here and, you know, say that player single to left. And at this point, again, it's pretty standard uh, entry, 643, uh, double play, give them the X. And there you can see, record that double play, pretty simple. And all your plays are over here. So in fact, if you want to, if you realize, ah, that wasn't a 643, actually, it was the third baseman that covered, not the shortstop, so we'll call it uh, 543, double play. You can always come in and edit, save it, and you're good to go. You can also come into the full play-by-play -play window, um, and I'll show you that here once we enter a few more plays. And as everybody uh, comes around to score, the system will ask, confirm, since I didn't put in, uh, in fact, let's redo that. Um, you want to put in your you know, advance like that. If you don't, the system will prompt you and ask you if they moved up. Uh, to home. They may have only moved to third. We'll go ahead and move them home. And then it'll prompt you for the RBIs. And there you go. So now if we want to edit that, we can come back in here, the full play-by-play, -play, and you'll see the full listing of what's happened in this inning. Um, so again, to edit, you just press that edit button there and edit, and it'll allow you to change that play. Um, we'll just say that he doubled to right instead of right center. Let's go ahead and uh, pull pull our pitcher from the game. Feels like they've been getting rocked around a little, so uh, we'll come into our rosters tab here, and uh, we'll go to our home team and change lineup. So Robles is our pitcher right now, and we'll go ahead and put in an actual pitcher like Steven Strasburg. Save. And now we'll be back here, and we'll see in the window here, Strasburg is in the pitch for Robles, and Strasburg is on the mound here um, in our graphic. So you can go, would then, at this point, you know, continue with your inning, and uh, we'll say they struck out looking. And you'll get your end of inning report, and you can go ahead and either edit the, or edit the plays or move on to your next inning. And from here, the, you know, play sequence kind of carries on out. So we'll go ahead and hurry through some plays here um, so we can go through the game wrap-up situation. Give a single, why not? And uh, we'll put in a fielder's choice here just to go through some different scenarios. Go ahead and give this team a hit as well, just to avoid uh, the no-hitter situation. Um, we'll go ahead and say they flew out. To right, this runner was able to advance to third. Again, just showing you some different scenarios, things that happen um, in a baseball game, not uncommon. Gomes will reach on the fielder's choice. Turner's going to be thrown out trying to score. And then Zimmerman will pop up to the pitcher.
Okay, so we're entering the seventh inning, but our home team is losing, so we're going to play a full uh, seventh inning here. So we'll head into uh, the bottom of the seventh, and again, let's go ahead and put in some defensive changes here, uh, just to show. Same idea as changing out our pitcher. Uh, so we'll come in here and go to change our lineup. And let's just go ahead and say that this player's in at first. They're in and left field and save. And now you can see that those changes have been made here on our screen. And actually, let's go ahead and bring in a uh, new pitcher as well. Get that save. So Lowry's on to pitch here. And we'll go from there to complete the game. So our final out has been recorded. We'll hit OK. And the screen will notify you as well. The final out has been recorded. So from here, it'll tell you to use complete game information and the input pitching decisions to wrap up. Uh, so your complete game info, you'll come in here. Don't worry about updating the records. Uh, the system will do that for you automatically. Just put in your attendance. Say 1,000 people were there. And again, if you hadn't added anything else, uh, you can come in and put it your umpires, things like that. You want to make sure you put in the total time for the game. So this is going to be the elapsed time of the game, not, you know, if the game was lasted three hours, you wouldn't put in 3 p.m. You just put three uh, like this for the total hours. That's important, and that's how the system knows to mark the box score as final. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, scroll down, we'll go ahead and save it, and we'll input our pitching decisions. Uh, crew with the win, make him want to know Robles at the loss, and then we'll go ahead and give Lowry that save. And we'll save that, and you'll see the system up here has notified that we're all synced up and we're ready to go. And uh, now it will be all set, and your reports can be downloaded from here. You can go, go ahead and download your pack file, your XML from here. Uh, if you're an NCAA institution, you can press this button if you have it set up within your stat partners for the file to be sent to the NCAA. Um, and as always with the Presto Network, any information uh, here will be shared with anyone else in the Presto Network. That could be the opposing team or your uh, a conference or organization you belong to, uh, such as the NAIA or the NJCAA. So that's the basics for your baseball uh, Presto stats entry. Great. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, Neil. Um, did you guys want to go through any questions that came in during the baseball video before I switch over to uh, basketball. Yeah, I'll, I'll handle this one here about the 40-man uh, roster limits within uh, baseball softball mm -hmm. for Presto Stats. Um, that limit still is in place uh, for the 40-man roster. There's been discussion uh, to expand that, but to my knowledge, we're keeping that at the 40-man limit for now. That allows us to keep our files compatible with Stat Crew. Um, so somebody else asked, if you do get a roster that has the more than 40 players on it, how do you handle that? Um, that's kind of a, the tricky spot where you'll either need to ask the team, the, you know, the opposing team to cut that roster down to 40 active players, or we could give you access to that team within Presto for you to import their roster. And then within Presto, uh, Mark players is inactive to get that limit down to the 40. Uh, the, the Presto stats will, pro will not let you launch the game if you have more than 40 on a roster, uh, 40 active players on the roster. So you'll be alerted before you can even enter a game. Uh, about that limit. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, when using Presto stats for baseball and softball. Thanks, Neil. We do get that question a lot. Um, again, this was put in place um, originally for compatibility with Stat Crew. Um, depending on what happens with the Stat Crew product, um, we can certainly look at uh, lifting that restriction down the road. Um, any other questions before we jump into some basketball? Okay, I will start basketball. Well, it looks like we just got one in here about uh, defensive, defensive <laughs> indifference. Showing you how to Sorry, use. Go ahead. No, you're good. Sorry. Uh, we had one last question come in there about uh, scoring mm -hmm. a defensive indifference. Um, and yes, you can score. Um, there's, there are codes for that entry uh, within Presto stats. 